All right, I'm Jeff Lewis. Today we're going to talk about when to use a four-prong approach instead of a two-prong approach when applying California's anti-slap law. Most lawyers are aware of the two-prong approach courts use to analyze anti-slap motions. Prong one asks, did the defendant show that the claims arose from protective activity like free speech or petition rights? And prong two evaluates if the plaintiff established a prima facie case with a probability of prevailing. The analysis becomes more complex when you're dealing with commercial speech, litigation in the public interest, or when litigation concerns conduct that may be illegal. In those instances, the court must determine if there's any exemptions that remove the claim from anti-slap protection. I call these slap outs because if one of the exemptions applies, the claim is outside the protection of the anti-slap law. However, Two of these exemptions are themselves subject to exceptions, and if one of these exceptions applies, an otherwise exempt claim will be subject to or within the purview of California's anti-slap law. I call these exceptions slap-ins, because if an exception applies, the claim is within the protection of California's anti-slap law. Because of these complexities, I've created a flowchart to help me analyze slap-outs, slap-ins, and incorporate it within the two-prong structure typically employed in analyzing an anti-slap claim. If you're in the position as a judge or a lawyer of analyzing the application of the anti-slap law, prudence suggests that you apply four steps, not just the traditional two prongs. So here we go. Step A, do the three exemptions apply? Is this a slap out? So the three categories of exemptions are public interest litigation, commercial speech, and illegal conduct. Now note, if illegal conduct exemption is found to apply, that's the end of the analysis. It's a one-step inquiry. If it's illegal conduct, motion's denied. But if one of these uh, other two exemptions apply, the public interest or commercial speech exemption applies, that's not the analysis. Then you go to step B and see, are there any exceptions to the two exemptions? And those three exemptions are reporters and academia, creative works, and nonprofit. If one of those three exceptions apply, it's a slap in because the claim is now brought back within the scope of anti-slap law. So again, look at my flow chart. If the exemptions apply and there is no exception, the motion is denied. On the other hand, if the exemptions apply as to commercial speech or public interest litigation, but one of these three exceptions apply, and then you proceed to a more traditional two-prong analysis, prong one being, does the claim arise from protected activity, such as those made in an official proceeding, statements made in connection with issues under consideration by a public body, statements made in a public forum concerning an issue of public interest, and the catch-all category of other conduct in furtherance of free speech and petition rights. Now, if this prong one is not met, meaning the claim is not held to be within protected activity, the anti-slap motion will be denied. On the other hand, if the defendant satisfies its burden under prong one to prove the claims arise from protected activity, you proceed to the final step, step D or prong two. Can the plaintiff prove a prima facie case of probability of prevailing on its claims? And if the plaintiff fails this test, cannot prove that probability of prevailing, the motion will be denied. On the other hand, if a plaintiff fails prong two, there is no probability of prevailing, the motion will be granted. So this is my complicated flowchart for analyzing slap claims under a four-prong approach instead of the two-prong approach. If you want a copy, email me at jeff at jefflewislaw.com. Reminder, every case is different. This is not legal advice.